Welcome everyone to week one, lesson one, the world in spatial terms. This is Ms. Taggart and welcome to our first online class. Chapter one really gives us an introduction to geography and how it influences world cultures. We can't move on to understanding the United States and Canada until we understand how geography influences world cultures. The world in spatial terms is where you'll learn about what geographers do and how they view the world. And we're also going to cover some principles of geography and tools that will help us understand what factors are influencing the cultures. So how do geographers look at the world? The first step, what is geography? Geography is the study of the location and distribution of physical features and living things on Earth's surface and how they relate to each other. Geographers are going to ask questions such as where, why there, and why is this an issue important? They're going to look into matters of environment and spatially how the earth is organized. Geography is broken down into two main branches, physical geography and human geography. Let's first look at physical geography. Physical geography is one of the main branches of geography. It involves the study of earth's natural features, including water, landforms, vegetation, and climate. Physical geographers are curious about how these features are interrelated and therefore they study like things like the effects of flooding on soil fertility. Physical geographers also analyze how physical features interact with plant and animal life to create ecosystems. An ecosystem consists of all living and non-living things in an area and how they relate and depend on each other. For example, in forests common in North America, the sun and ride provide energy and moisture for trees to grow. Squirrels depend on the leaves, fruits, and nuts for trees for food. In turn, squirrels become prey for larger animals such as foxes and bobcats. When plants and animals die, their remains decompose or break down and provide nutrients for the soil. In turn, small plants and large trees need the soil to grow. The living and non-living things in the forest relate to and depend on each other for existence. This interconnection of living and non-living things keeps the ecosystem functioning and balanced. However, if one of these elements is removed, the ecosystem can be damaged or destroyed, such as a drought. While physical geography is focusing on the physical features of Earth, Human geography involves studying human activities and how they relate to on Earth. This branch of geography analyzes how people interact with the environment, including how they adapt to and also change the surrounding land. Human geography also includes studying patterns of human settlement, movement, and cultural development, which is largely the focus of our course. In addition, human geography also covers the way people organize their governments and economies to use and distribute their natural resources. Human geographers often example, excuse me, examine how people modify the environment. For example, geographers study what happens when people cut down forests to create farmland. They look at the ways people take mineral resources from the land and catch fish from the oceans and then the, investigate the consequences of these activities. A large part of understanding the consequences is finding the patterns of human settlement, movement, and cultural development. Human geographers want to know where people settle and what causes them to move. People are not distributed evenly across Earth's surface. Some areas are more heavily populated than others. Human geographers look for clues in the surrounding environment to understand why that is the case. Human migration or movement from one place to another is another subject of study. They look at where people are moving and why. Are people moving within their own countries or to different countries? Are they trying to find better work opportunities? Are they leaving places that are unsafe or affected by drought? The next step is understanding the the economic and political systems. Different regions function under different, different economies and political systems. People everywhere have to meet their needs for food and water, for shelter, and for an organized society. They have to decide how best to use the available natural resources 
and how to manage conflict over resource use. Geographers are studying the ways people create government and our economic systems to meet their needs. For example, what crops does a particular country grow? What goods and services does it produce? And how does it transport and trade its national resources and finished products? For week one, lesson one, you want to make sure you're addressing the discussion board. The discussion board question is found on Schoology and you need to remember to respond to your peers. Today, my suggestion is to, to answer your own discussion board question, and then over the next three days to check back and respond to your peers. You also need to take a look at class activity, which is labeled under week one, activity one. This assignment needs to be submitted. Homework one for week one, homework one is a vocabulary list. The vocabulary is all going to be found within your tech book, and all of the vocabulary terms are going to be highlighted in blue. After completing these activities over the next two days, we will then return for week one, lesson two. Remember, if you have any questions or concerns, please email me or post to the discussion board. And if you wanted to address a question to appear, there's also the location for that. Have a good day.